Hi everyone, welcome to the lab. This time I have a Shure SLX receiver for repair. Frequency band is G5 from 494 to 518 MHz. And this thing does not receive anything. Let me show you. Here I have a transmitter, which is not an SLX transmitter, but a compatible FP series transmitter. I don't have a SLX transmitters handy at the moment. So this thing is compatible as long as the uh, frequency band is the same, which it is, G5. And they are identical to SLX, except there is no LCD display and no buttons to set channel and group. And the only way to set that is to sync with the receiver. So we turn this thing on. And uh, here is the infrared sync window. So we hold it like this, push this button, watch this LED. It flashed red for a while. And now they should be in sync. So we should see this ready LED light up and we should see which antenna is used but nothing is happening. Let's see if we can find out what's wrong with this thing. Here we are inside. Let's take a brief look. Here on the back we have uh, two antenna inputs, power supply connector, 12 volts, XLR and uh, TRS output connectors, Output level trim pot. Here it is inside. The RF section is well shielded here, of course. And this is the microcontroller. Here we have all the low frequency analog stuff and the front panel board as well. So I took these covers off looked up some chips and now I think I more or less understand what's going on here. This is a local oscillator for tuning the receiver. Here we have two antenna inputs and a switch here to choose which antenna is active. Then this filter, amplifier, another filter and this chip is a receiver front-end chip. It has another amplifier and a mixer. So it should down convert the carrier frequency, which is about 500 megahertz, to some intermediate frequency. And I believe there should be another down conversion step, so I suspect this is another mixer. I can be wrong, this might be some filter, but anyway, the result should be 10.7 megahertz IF because I see these two 10.7 MHz ceramic filters right next to a FM demodulator chip. The output from this chip should be audio signal. Here we have a quad op amp, another quad op amp, and this chip is a compounder. Here we have two identical uh, so-called watch crystals 32.768 kilohertz. One seems to be connected to the microcontroller and I think the other one must be used for tone key detection. The transmitter should always send this tone key and without it the output of the receiver should be muted. So now having this understanding let's start checking. I'm going to use this bird signal hawk spectrum analyzer with an oscilloscope probe. The matching is going to be terrible and this is not a 500 megahertz probe, but that should be fine. We just need to roughly see if the signal is present, conversion is happening and so on. And the analyzer can tolerate DC on the input, so it's not a problem probing uh, some spot where DC might be present. And to avoid picking up the signal from the air, I'm not going to use the transmitter, but I'm going to use uh, this generator to generate the carrier and send it uh, right into one of the antenna inputs. That should work just fine. 
All right, let's check. The receiver is set to group 6 channel 2 and we can see what the frequency is here. 513.375 MHz. So, I'm generating this carrier here, modulating by 32.768 kHz. This is our tone key. The amplitude is minus 50 dBm, which should be plenty. And I set center frequency here on the spectrum analyzer to this frequency. And uh, we can see right after the antenna switch, here is the signal. We can barely see it around minus 80 or so, and that's because of poor matching, but that's okay. We can check that it is much stronger after the amplifier here on the input of this uh, receiver front end chip. And here it is, much stronger, about uh, minus 63 or 65, let's say. The actual value doesn't matter much. The important part is that it is much stronger after the amplification stage. And that's uh, what we should see. Now, the LO. It is here on pin 8 of this chip. And I found it around uh, 624 megahertz. Yes, here it is, nice and strong. So, the result of down conversion should be around 110 or so. 110 megahertz. And it is uh, on pin 7. Yeah, here it is. Slightly more than 110, but it's there. That's the result of down conversion. And if we disable the output of the generator, it goes away. We enable the generator, and here it is back. So this uh, looks right to me. I don't know exactly the frequencies uh, we should see of the low and down conversion, but this looks right. Some down conversion is happening. And uh, especially it looks right because we can see the result here, 10.7 megahertz on these um, ceramic filters, 10.7, and here it is. And again, if I disable the generator, it goes away, I enable the generator, and here it is back. So I believe the RF part is working fine. Now we can grab an oscilloscope and check the low frequency stuff. Now let's check the output from this FM demodulator chip on pin 8, I believe. Here is our 32 kHz signal. Quite noisy and low, about 200 millivolts peak to peak. I found it here on this test point as well. And then I believe it goes to this quad op amp to be amplified, filtered and so on. Let's say we can check on this output. It is much stronger here. I did not trace everything here, of course, it would be quite difficult. Eventually, I believe, the signal should pass through this crystal for tone key detection, and here is one side of it. Nice and strong, about 5 volts peak to peak. But on the other side of this crystal, the signal is very low about 300 millivolts peak to peak and this seems to be wrong I suspect something is wrong with this crystal so I replaced this crystal they are very popular I have plenty of them I didn't transfer this rubber holder yet I will and now check this out ready and active antenna 
And of course, if I turn this generator off, they disappear on and they come back. Fixed. Thanks for watching. Bye.